Happy Saturday and welcome back to the Mossy Muse video blog. Today we're going to be talking about brandy, armagnac, and cognac. You may be asking yourself, what is the difference between brandy, armagnac, and cognac? If I were to draw you a Venn diagram, it would say brandy. Inside that Venn diagram, you'd have a circle that said cognac, and you'd have a circle that said armagnac. Cognacs very specifically refer to brandies that are made in the cognac region of France. Armagnacs very specifically refer to brandies that are made in the Aquitaine region of France. There are also very specific varietal grapes that are used for those two. Well, we're not going to talk about that today, largely because I can't remember what it is. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a, an American brandy um, distilled in Louisville, Kentucky from Copper and Kings. We're also going to be tasting and discussing the Remy Martin XO. And we'll be talking about some of the age designations around cognac. And then finally, we're going to finish up with an Armagnac from the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. You may be asking, why is the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society bottling a brandy? We'll talk about that in a little bit as well. We'll also talk about what, what's, what the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society is. Today we're going to be doing our tasting in red wine glass that we have because we don't have any proper brandy snifters available right now. Our wine glass, however, is a great substitute for a brandy snifter because of its bulbous shape. It allows the aroma to be built up much as it would in a regular snifter so that you can still nose it just as well. So first we're going to start with the Copper and Kings. Craft work brandy from Butchertown, from Butchertown, Louisville, USA. Um, it is finished in against the grain smoked Scottish ale barrels. So much like whiskeys, all of these are distilled from grapes and then aged in previously used barrels. So we don't need to get too much in here just for the sample. So you can see it's got a nice rich amber color, much like a nice whiskey. So you can see that it's been aged in a good, in a good oak barrel. Swirling that around to see to get some of the legs. You can use a lot of the same testing, tasting techniques that you would for a whiskey or a good scotch. It's got some nice legs that are running fairly slowly actually. Um, and again, it's got a nice deep amber color. Getting bits of apple out of this. There's an apocryphal tale that says when the Vikings came to France, they discovered the wonders of French wine. And they said, hey, let's take this stuff home along with all the gold and the loot and everything else. But they realized wine wasn't going to keep very well. So they said, let's cook it down and add water and we get home. And then they got home and realized it tasted just fine the way it was distilled. And that is supposedly how brandy was invented, but that's probably not necessarily true. Apples, slightly sweet, slightly sweet some I don't want to say potpourri, but you know when you get like that Christmas potpourri, so a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of an apple mixed to it. That's kind of what I'm getting when I nose this one. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, a lot of cinnamon there. Um, again, apple-y, kind of a dried fruit flavor to it. Nice and warming. Um, So very fruit forward, I would say, um, but not too sweet, but just uh, just sweet enough to be interesting. And again, very warming on the palate. So it's rather appropriate. I'm going to say it's got a Kentucky hug, much like a, much like many bourbons, because it was made in Louisville. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and finish this one. That was wonderful. It's funny, um, the Mozzie Muse tries to get me to enjoy bourbon more. She has been to Louisville a couple of times. She has taken um, several distillery tours and she's really getting back into bourbons and I just can't do it. So hopefully this will appease her a bit that I actually do like something that came from Louisville. <laughs> Next, we're gonna talk about Remy Martin XO uh, Cognac. This is a, a bottle of my wife got me for Christmas a couple of years ago. Um, it was my Christmas treat. I was allowed to go into the vault at our local liquor store and um, pick something that was uh, out of our normal price range. Um, the XO is important. Um, there are several grades to cognac. VS means very special. It means, it means it's been aged at least two years. VSOP is the next grade, very superior old pale. It means it's been aged at least four years. And XO means it's been aged at least six years in the barrel before being bottled. So. Here we have our Remy Martin XO. Remy Martin is one of the oldest distilleries in Europe. It was founded in 1724. Um, it's possibly one of the most well-known luxury spirits brands in the world, and they are quite well-known for their cognac. That is much darker than the Copper and Kings bottle that we just sampled. So as you can see, it's got a much darker amber color to it. 
much slower legs, so I suspect that uh, like some scotches, it's going to have a very oily feel. You would think that I've drank this much of it, I would know these things, but I have a very bad short-term memory. So we're going to put this bottle back here so you continue to view it. As I say, oh wow, that smell, this, the nose is completely different. Um, it's much more intense, much richer. A lot of strong floral notes coming out of it, not as fruity and not as cinnamony and apple-y as the Craftworks was. Um, I can tell that it was made from a grape, um, so definitely some fruit tones, but different in nature than what I was getting from the Craftworks. Wow, um, very vanilla, very smooth, very easy going down. Just sweet enough, but not too sweet. A lot of the times you get a vanilla flavor and it's it might be overpoweringly sweet. This is just perfect actually. It's velvety going down. It's an amazing mouthfeel. I, I see why I enjoy drinking this so much. Uh, <laughs> now that I'm taking the time to actually think about it and try to help you guys understand what I'm tasting. Now, keep in mind your palate is going to be completely different from my palate, and that's kind of the joy of exploring spirits. I'm going to save that for later. <laughs> so, I'm not getting a lot of leathery notes out of it or anything. Maybe a hint of tobacco, perhaps. Um, but otherwise, it's just a very smooth, velvety feel. Vanilla sweetness, um, hints of grape in there. Ironically, Aroma Martin does not give you any tasting notes like many other um, alcohol brands do today. They're just going to let you, it's, it just tastes good. That's what they know. They don't have to tell you what to look for. So um, highly recommend this bottle as well. I'm a big fan of it. Um, let's move on now to the Armagnac from the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. The Scotch Malt Whiskey Society is an interesting entity that um, the Mossy Muse and I ran into maybe a year ago or so. Um, they are essentially a club. Um, they are a curator of fine whiskeys. They do not own any of their own distilleries. They send people to travel around Scotland to find the best distilleries they can and find specific cask batches that they will purchase the barrels from. They'll age those in their own warehouses and they'll bottle them. Um, as a member of the society, you have exclusive access to these special bottles that are extremely limited edition. They have meetings th around the world for different chapters of the society. We, uh, we actually go, have been to several meetings here in Florida, in, Orla in both Orlando and Miami. They give you access to whiskeys that are unlike anything else that you're gonna buy on the market. And since you don't know who the distillers are, they do buy some barrels from some of the major distilleries. You're, and the Mossy Muse actually states it quite well on our blog, you're not going to be prejudiced by brand marketing when you taste these. You're strictly going on what you as a consumer will nose and taste from these bottles yourself. So she and I like a lot of the same things, but we like them for completely different reasons as well. And we actually had, there's a couple of bottles up there where I said, I kind of like this, but I think you're gonna like it better. So I'm gonna save it all for you, which is kind of my way of saying I didn't really want to drink any more of it. But that being said, the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society is also branching out into other distilled spirits, depending on the parts of the world they're trying to penetrate. They are getting more into mainland Europe, so they have actually branched out into Armagnacs and Cognacs. They are starting to do vodkas. Um, I believe they're also doing rums and tequilas based on the different areas of the world they're actually starting to expand into. If you have a chance, check out the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. Um, give them a test run. They have events all over, the, all over the country and all over the world. If there's one in your area, buy a ticket. Just see what it's like. You don't have to join, but it's definitely an experience, and it's definitely a great time to meet other people who love distilled spirits and to talk about them. So without, I, I feel like I've spoken enough, let's talk about the Armagnac now. It's called Fully Loaded Sweet Trolley. Um, that's another interesting thing about the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. Their marketers are possibly the uh, most brilliant, witty people in the world. Um, this is cask number A5.3, number, bottle number one of 562. We, we scored bottle number one. That's amazing. I, I'm quite impressed with your shopping prowess, my dear. The, the muse is off to the side filming right now. Um, vintage 1997. So this was bottled. Uh, this was uh, distilled in 1997. It has been aging in a in a beautiful cask for some time. 65% alcohol by volume. Let's give this one a taste and see how the Aquitaine grapes taste compared to the cognac grapes. Oh. 
Let's hold these up for comparison. The Armagnac is very slightly darker than the Cognac. Leads me to believe it may have been aged for longer than six years. Very much darker brown. Hints of red in there. Lovely legs that run just at the right speed. Let's give it a nose. Completely different from the Remy Martin. Since I have them both together, that smells mapley now. Much sweeter than it was the first time I had it. This is much more lilacs, violets, strong floral smells. Perhaps a hint of tobacco and some other in this. This is much drier in nose than the, than the Remy Martin Cognac was. Um, much like a cask strength whiskey, um, not as smooth, I would say, um, giving me a warm French hug, so to speak, much drier, much more pungent than the Remy Martin, um, totally different flavor profile. So if you're looking for something different in distilled grape spirits, this might be up your alley. Um, I can, I definitely get a much stronger feeling that this was a distilled grape varietal, a dry grape varietal. Um, as I, as I nose it more, it's getting a little bit sweeter actually. So I'm getting more, more candied walnut notes actually, as I, as I nose it some more. Despite what the legs look like, it does not actually coat my mouth like I was expecting it to. It goes down very easily after two or three sips. Um, definitely much drier. And for full disclosure, I prefer this one much more than the Muse does, as we were talking about our different palettes earlier. So drier, don't want to say bitter, that's not a good descriptor, but it's definitely more on that less sweet end of the flavor spectrum. So what we've got is an American brandy, a French cognac, and a French armagnac. Three, of, three sisters in the same family of distilled spirits, but with very different flavor profiles. I hope you found this to be an informative um, bit about brandy, cognac, and armagnac, and I hope you're able to check some of these out in your local store.